sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. A senator was tragically run over by a large truck carrying a truckload of money from a super PAC. And he, he ended up at the pearly gates in front of St. Peter. St. Peter looked at him and said, you know, we have a little problem. We don't get too many politicians up here. <laughs> and, and we've decided that since you are so good at making decisions for others, we'll let you make decisions for yourself. So you get to spend one day in heaven and one day in hell. And then you can decide where you would like to spend eternity. Seemed fair enough, so to the elevator and down, 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 down. He went, to, gates of hell opened, and there was this beautiful golf course with this magnificent clubhouse, and his friends were there, and they were eating lobster and caviar, drinking champagne. They played golf. He had a wonderful time. His day ended, and he went back up, and St. Peter said, now you spend a day in heaven. So he spent the day with other contented souls from going from cloud to cloud, singing hymns, worshiping God, and going back and forth to earth, helping people in need. And he enjoyed that. And when it was over, St. Peter said, okay, now you get to choose. And the senator said, you know, I would never have thought it, but I think I'd prefer hell. Thinking about that caviar and the lobster. Okay, your decision to the elevator, down, 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 and the gates of hell open, and it's a toxic wasteland. And his friends are all in rags, in, in this toxic waste, scooping it up, trying to get rid of it. And the devil walks up to him, and the senator stammers, I, I don't understand. Yesterday, this was a beautiful golf course, and now all my friends seem so miserable. And the devil smiled and looked at him and said, yesterday, senator, yesterday? Oh, yesterday we were campaigning. Today you voted, and now you know the truth. <laughs> and now you know the truth. Just think in another nine days, you won't have to put up with election ads for another two years. Please, God. And that's the truth. But today is Reformation Sunday. Today is a day when Lutherans and many others are confronted by a simple question. What is truth? What is truth? If Christ's truth will set us free, exactly what is that truth in your life? And how does it set you free? We've heard so many lies and experienced so much division over the last year that we can't help but wonder, what really is the truth? At every newscast or debate, fact finders tell us how truths have been twisted into lies. And through all of this, we simply yearn for the truth. Simple truth that we can know really is the truth. Pilate asked that question some 2,000 years ago when he asked Jesus, what is truth? So what is truth, the real truth in your life today? Is it the often deceptive truth of the world? Or is the real truth for you the grace and forgiveness that is God's free gift to you? Can real truth be so profound and yet so simple as that? Perhaps Perhaps it seems too simple. Perhaps it seems too honest. Perhaps it doesn't cost enough. God's grace freely given to all people for the forgiveness of sin. Is that the truth in your life? Or is that just campaigning? In our divided nation and world, truth often is to be too often couched with what's in it for me. Or how can I twist that truth so that I can get what I want? What's in it for me becomes, becomes our indulgence, our way out of what we see as an earthly purgatory through the quest for more stuff and more power. 
but more so often means more expense, more worry, and more becomes less, less satisfaction, less peace in our lives. And the self-salvation we strive for is sin's empty cup. Yet the truth of Jesus Christ can be a hard truth for us to hear and know because sometimes it can take us out of our comfort zone. We can't control the truth of Christ's love for all people. We can't turn that truth against our enemies or those we disagree with. God's truth calls us to care for the poor, feed the hungry, love our neighbor, welcome the foreigner. We can't mold that truth so that we can stay in our comfort zone with our backs turned on God's beloved. Like the senator and the devil in the story, you don't get votes by taking people out of their comfort zone. You get them by pandering them in their comfort zone. But dear friends, God isn't looking for votes. God is looking for you. God's greatest desire is you. God's truth of salvation and eternal life is not an empty cup. It is an overflowing cup of grace. Yes, God is looking for you, looking to free you from the bondage of sin that so often enslaves us in our modern world. God isn't pandering you with empty promises. God's truth is real, written not on stone tablets, but written on your heart, written with grace that we don't deserve, but is God's delight to give. 507 years ago, in a church framed with false truths and filled with indulgences, Martin Luther saw the real truth of God. God did not enslave us in chains of law to be captive to sin. God wrote God's law on our hearts so that we might be captive to God. Reforming our hearts that we may always be reformed through God's love and grace. And through God's freely given grace and our faith in Christ, those chains of sin are broken. The truth of God's love was revealed to set us free. Free. Freedom. Freedom to live into God's truth that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Truth that was nailed to a cross for our sins. Truth that was crucified, died, and was buried, then resurrected to the fullness of life so that you and I might know and have eternal life. And this truth, this great real truth, is found right here today, here in this font and at this table of grace. Our sin washed away, our forgiveness complete in wine and bread. We are justified by God's free gift of grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. That was the truth of the Reformation so many years ago, and that is God's truth for you today. Dear friends, the reformation of you and me through grace and the reformation of the church is not a one and done proposition. Where we are today is not the end point, but the starting point, the new beginning of whatever God-given chapter comes next for you and for this mission that is Agnes Day. Luther and the Reformers asked their lo- risked their lives so that this church might be reformed to show us that salvation through grace is a gift from God. Jesus risked his life to show us that grace, God's love, is a gift from God as he reformed the church then. What are you willing to risk for the kingdom of God here at Agnes Day? To step outside the comfort zone of these four walls, to follow Christ into the world, a world of false God and false truths, to reach people 
who are longing for real truth, the truth of God's unconditional love and grace given for you. How can this church be a church that is reformed and always reforming, praying that God's will be done on earth today and in the future? That's the question before you. Dear friends, God has chosen each of you to answer that question. And God has chosen wisely. And that, that is the truth. Reformed and always reforming. Christ's church 507 years ago, Christ's church here today, and Christ's church in a bright and exciting new future for Agnes Day. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.